Greetings, uh, Internet. This is Dr. Sunil Agarwal. Um, you're joining me for my second uh, video blog or vlog post for the New York Cannabis Report. Last time I called it Medical Cannabis. This time I think it's better to just broadly talk about cannabis. So there's a very big news that has happened today. Today, January 20th, 2014, the President of the United States of America has uh, just been, uh, has just had quotes published today in The New Yorker uh, by, uh, in an interview with a journalist in which he has admitted that legalization of marijuana or cannabis uh, laws at the state level are important laws that should be uh, that should go forward he has acknowledged that the use of cannabis is not more harmful to the individual than the use of alcohol he says it's less harmful these are um, the most significant statements pro uh, cannabis uh, sanity in line with the medical scientific facts about cannabis that we have seen in the highly politicized American presidency in many, many, many decades. This is the first time in my lifetime that I've heard a president uh, state this. I, I was born in 1979. Um, it was the tail end of Carter administration, but I don't remember that. Ronald Reagan in 1980, uh, when he was running for office, said um, marijuana is one of the most is the most dangerous drug, according to leading medical researchers, and we have not even begun to discover all the ill effects, but they are permanent ill effects. So this is um, how far we've come from the Reagan presidency to the Obama presidency. Uh, the most dangerous drug to safer than alcohol. So um, reformers are to be uh, congratulated and they should be very happy, those who have been working to spread this. And it's a huge vindication for many people who have been trying to argue this position, the hypocrisy of our laws. Uh, it's noteworthy that today is also the birthday of Michelle Obama, uh, the president's wife. She's 50 years old today, and this is also the weekend of Martin Luther King Day holiday. Uh, Ryan Grimm, a reporter for Huffington Post on, on Twitter, and by the way, the entire Twitterverse is uh, tweeting this, uh, this post, this, this uh, Obama quote, because it's such a big break to actually have some rational, sane, uh, you know, truth-telling about marijuana, cannabis, uh, pharmacological dangers, and rel relative to other commonly used drugs out there. Uh, so a Grimm uh, tweeted that, oh, will will the DEA reschedule marijuana right away, or wait till Monday, or take a few days? So uh, ex they, clearly the next step is policy change. Um, I think, uh, Ryan Grimm, if you're listening, uh, Monday, they probably wouldn't be able to get to it because it is a federal holiday, Martin Luther King Day. So maybe Tuesday we'll see uh, cannabis rescheduled. I can only hope. I think that's. Uh, I mean, you can't maintain the position. The legal, the president and the executive has the legal authority to change the scheduling of drugs based on uh, you know periodic assessments and, and ongoing legal and political and scientific uh, understandings. That was what the Controlled Substances Act um, allowed the president. So he can't on the one hand have the position that the, the drug is safer than alcohol and uh, at the same time have the, the legal position coming out of his office, a policy position, that it is the drug is as dangerous as uh, heroin. Um, and, um, you know, uh, other psychedelic drugs. 
which themselves shouldn't be classified as Schedule One either, but um, right now our drug, federal drug laws classify cannabis as more dangerous than morphine and cocaine. Uh, and if if we think that cannabis is less dangerous than alcohol, uh, but legally more dangerous than cocaine and heroin, uh, it's a it's a very confusing picture <laughs> beginning to emerge. So. Um, it, it seems like uh, rescheduling uh, has to follow suit, so uh, that has to follow through from this announcement. So I just wanted to state that if there is cannabis rescheduling, um, even if it's down to Schedule Two, um, which sees accepted medical uses, but high potential for abuse still. But again, that's not consistent with what Obama is saying. It, it's more like Schedule Five or Schedule Six. Um, I don't know, sorry, there's, a, there's a, no, no Schedule 6, it's just Schedule 5 in federal law. Um, you know, that that's the level of uh, risk, like maybe codeine cough syrup, or even no, no schedule at all. That's the best position for this drug to be in, uh, for uh, people, states to regulate it locally as they choose, and um, for uh, medical uses to not be foreclosed. Uh, the, the important thing is to recognize that even in even in, but let's say you know it's a political compromise. It's going to take a long time to turn the ship around, and they'll sort of start with a you know schedule two or three. Uh, schedule three is where THC pills are, and you'll see a, a lot of mo a move to medically um, ma bring marijuana cannabis under the pharma uh, pharmacy stocking systems that other controlled medicinal drugs like. Uh, morphine and uh, oxycodone and other drugs are regulated under. Um, if we do that, it's very important that um, we recognize that uh, there are a cannabis monograph out there that can be utilized to uh, to stock and to produce and identify cannabis medicines, uh, and that um, there's testing that can be done, and that all of this can be locally produced, and that we we can develop seed banks that can be shared. Uh, from region to region so that people can produce different cannabis uh, medicines and supplies locally, uh, do tests on patients, uh, develop a, a clinical uh, database, and then share those uh, results with others who are also using the same cannabis because uh, we're all drawing from a common seed stock, seed bank. These kind of things can be possible now and uh, under uh, a, a, this kind of still a, a, you know, controlled cannabis regime if, if, if we're just dealing with a Schedule 2 or 3 type picture. So I think that's, that's exciting. Uh, and I think at the same time, you know, the, this is going to be off, there's going to be all kinds of uh, legalization initiatives that will proceed forward now with the President's uh, endorsement that these kind of initiatives are important especially to offset the uh, racial injustice and hypocrisy under which we've lived for so long under these laws, which uh, three-quarters of a million people each year are arrested under. Um, the most common arrest in New York City is for cannabis marijuana. It's um, many, many uh, thousands of human life, years of life have been lost in incarceration. Some 60, 20 million arrests, I think it is, since the 60s. So this is a, this is a big um, shift, and now that he's saying this is important to offset this long-standing injustice by doing this, I think other states will follow. So, um, so what I see happening is that that the medicalization will become more controlled uh, and more regulated, and you know I don't think that's anything to be feared. I think that, I think. Um, there, that there still should be uh, allowed a herbal medicine, botanical medicine framework as well. I think cannabis really lives in multiple different worlds. A, a social, um, you know, inebriant, um, uh, or uh, and also religious, spiritual sacrament, a um, botanical herbal medicine, uh, and a um, botanical drug substance. Uh, substrate for pharmaceuticalized products. All, it lives in all of these in, in these places. The resin of these flowers is that uh, important to so many different sectors. And um, so hopefully we'll be able to um, build all of these up more appropriately now that we've gotten this political uh, victory at the federal level um, from the president. So um, 
there, you know, the F FDA processes will go on, but I think this is a chance for the public and um, public officials uh, and states and municipalities and counties across the country to recognize that they can develop local, robust medicine systems, which will be very uh, cost effective and uh, generate a lot of new understandings uh, if we embrace the fact that uh, we can create regulated um, quality medicine systems with, with a cannabis plant and share that information with other jurisdictions and places around the country and the world. Uh, if we recognize this as commons medicine and uh, a common a commons medicine uh, that is to everybody's interest to develop. And we're talking about pain, pain medicines, uh, uh, oncological medicines, uh, you know, me medicines in various neurological uh, applications, uh, medicines and rheumatological applications, in gastrointestinal applications, um, dermatological applications, psychiatric applications. This, this really has a chance to, to contribute to so much of uh, uh, me medical uh, practice and patient care. So, uh, very exciting times, and uh, let's see how things unfold. Thank you. You can always listen, uh, check out my papers at cannabinergy.com and uh, the Center for the Cannabis Study of Cannabis and Social Policy, uh, uh, where I'm the Executive Science Director. Until next time. Thank you.